Well, hello there, and this is Auntie. And I am here to do my review on my 600 pound life Gina story. If this is your first time being here, please like, comment, and subscribe to my channel. And to all of my new subscribers, thank you all so much for joining the family. And to all of my nieces and nephews who have been here with me for the long haul, thank you all so much for your continued support. And to all the members of Auntie's Advice, thank you. Y'all, this episode right here had me screaming. And I mean screaming in so many different ways. Um, like I was like, for real? For real? <laughs> we really doing this? <sighs> we really doing this. This is really what we doing here. Okay. Now. I have had to go back and look at um, the different episodes and stuff of my 600 pound life. Um, I'm hoping that everybody is getting their notifications. I am not sure if you all are or not. Um, I'm hoping that you all. So. Hmm. Okay, so you all are getting your notifications. All right, so sorry for that pause. <laughs> sorry for that pause. So I have been going back slowly but surely and looking at um, my 600 pound life. I know y'all want me to do a whole lot of different stories, and I will get to them, okay? I promise you, I will get to the stories. But this particular story is about Gina, bitch, okay? So, Gina is a 28-year-old woman who has been living in her house on a sofa or a chaise lounge for fucking years, okay? <laughs> Excuse me for cursing, but I just I don't know what I'm gonna say in this, okay? So I'm telling you right now, this is your first notification and your last notification. If you cannot handle it, please log off now. Please go somewhere else, look at something else, watch another show that I do, go to Auntie's Advice Channel for Women so you can get all your warm and fuzzies from Auntie. But when I do my 600 pound life, you just gotta sit back. And it, you just got to be quiet for a little bit. Like I said, if you think that you cannot handle this, please log off now. I ain't going to be mad at you or nothing, okay? <laughs> I promise you that I will not be mad with you about signing off or logging off. So Gina is 28 years old. She has a wife by the name of Beth. She is... um. She lives in New Jersey and she is fat, okay? Because my 600 pound life, you have got to be at least 600 pounds in order to even qualify for the show. So we meet her and we go back and they tell her story. So according to Gina, she and her sister live together with their mommy and their daddy. They said that their father was extremely abusive, that he used to kick them um, to the point where she would be black and blue going to school, that he used to just, you know, abuse them horribly. And um, her and her sister, and, she, and they said that as soon as, you know, the beatings were over, they would go and get something to eat. And so food is what nurtured them or nurtured the hurt or, you know, made life bearable for them. And so this is where she is trying to establish this relationship that she has with food. And so she says that, you know, eventually, you know, the mother and the father 
got a divorce. She said when she was, I can't remember how old she was, but she was like going back through her childhood and at a very early age, she was already a hundred pounds. And so she said that, you know, as time went on, she continued to get bullied and all of that kind of stuff. And, you know, and it got worse because she didn't like the fact that she was being bullied in school. And nobody wants to be bullied. Y'all, excuse me while I fix this. So she, nobody wants to be bullied by anybody. And so she said that she was being bullied by because of her weight. But when she would come home, she really didn't have an outlet because her father was bullying her at home. She says that eventually, you know, her mom and her dad got a divorce and the mom just walked away and they ended up living with the abusive father and that the abuse just continued and continued on um, throughout her and her sister's childhood. And so now here we are today and she's bullying her wife. The bully has now turned into a bully. So when we meet her, we see her sitting in the living room, okay? Laying in the living room, eating in the living room, doing everything in that living room. She says that she doesn't even wash her eyes, okay? Unless the family complains. She said that she doesn't like taking a bath because she can't go upstairs where the shower is because she's too fat to go upstairs and get in the shower to wash her stinky butt. So she says that she hates taking a bath. It's one of the worst things that she um, wants to do. It's one of the worst things she has to do. She said that she only takes a bath 30 days, uh, once every 30 days, and that is only when the family is complaining about the stitch that they have to smell when they come through the door. You are 28 years old. You are absolutely having a menstrual cycle. How in the hell are you just washing your nasty stink tail once every 30 days? She goes into a powder room. Now, this isn't a cotton freaking bird bath, bitch. This is a rhino bath. She is in it scrubbing herself like they scrub rhinos at the gym with a poof, a sponge on the end of a stick. And she trying to clean her nasty stank ass once every 30 days in a powder room where she is barely sitting on the toilet. The toilet, in comparison to her big, fat, nasty, stank ass, is, 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 is comparable to her sitting on a cotton ball. The toilet absolutely disappears at the weight and the width of her body. And you think that that is suffice. The mother comes into the room and the mother is fat and nasty too. So the mother comes wobbling her ass in there and says, I made your bucket. The mother keeps saying, bucket, bucket, two men in a bucket. So the mother is coming in there wobbling, I made your bucket, tell Beth that your bucket mate, get your steak ass up and get and use your bucket, it's, it's once a month, the calendar says that it's the next month, it's time for you to wash your big fat stinky nasty trifling ass. and you gonna sit there and say I only wash my nasty butt when my family complains about it we see Beth up early in the morning cooking for all those mofos because she lives in the household with her 600 pound life, with Beth who's about probably 400 pounds. She living in there with the mother who 550 and a half. She living in there with the sister who about 425. And she living in there with the sister's fiance who look like he about 375, 400, 425, 450. It make you think you at a fucking auction. 
So Beth, who is the only one that seems like she is gainfully employed, gets up in the morning time. She says that she doesn't want to argue with her. So she just goes on and keep on, you know, going on with what, you know, she has to do. And, 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 and you know, uh, uh, but the girl is just eating her life away. And she's got to get up and make breakfast for all these mofos. Gina sits in there and brags at the fact that, you know, she was let, she was glad when she got to 400, 500 pounds because then she could get disability. She could get disability and get her a Section A home for her and her mama and all of them to stay up in. She says she still got beef with her mother, right? She still got problems with her mother and everything, you know, because she feels like, you know, it's a mother fault that you know she's fat like that and she said that you know she gets up every day and she lives that same old miserable life you live that same old miserable life bitch because this is the way that you, you you're comfortable with living this same old miserable ass life but you can't make this about somebody else. Not every time, goddamn. I just, I refuse. I refuse for people to sit up here. I, 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 I let me, goddamn it. I refuse to continue to keep hearing these mofos saying it's somebody else's fault. No, it's your fault. Just like today, I was sitting up there on the sofa, crying and everything about Kobe, looking at the memorial service, fell asleep and woke my own self up snoring, and I got too fat. Because anytime I done woke my own self up snoring, I'm too fat. I'm too heavy. Bitch, I called the gym. I said, look, I'll be there Thursday for my membership. I need to get in the pool. I need to wallow in the water, bitch. I need to wallow in the water. You know when, you, when, when things are getting out of hand. You know yourself. You cannot make excuses about where you are. Yes, we all have had trauma and drama in our lives. Nobody wants to be abused by their parents, and I can't even imagine it. But let me tell you something. Life goes the hell on, and you are a grown, rusty, stinky, nasty tail ass 28-year-old woman who is abusing your wife. So she says that she got to go to doctor now because she knows that, you know, her life depends on it. This is all we hear from her fat ass. My life depends on it. No, your life depends on you getting up and washing your nasty, stank, rank ass. And everybody else's life <coughs> for that matter. But everybody in the house is fat to death. Everybody. So her steak ass, you know, decides that she's going to go, you know, to doctor, um, doctor now, and you know, they're going to have to drive. So, you know, this is a, you know, according to her, you know, this is going to take 11 days, bitch. I have never known it to take 11 days to get your ass from New Jersey, from New Jersey to Houston, 11 days. And in 11 days is because she got to make all these damn stops at every daggone Waffle House, McDonald's, Burger King, Taco Bell, bitch. I mean, she's got to make a, a, a stop at Bennigan. She's got to go to the tur Green Turtle. This bitch got to go to Carabas. She got to go to a, a Pizza Hut, Domino's. It don't take no daggone 11 days to get from, from, from New Jersey to no cotton freaking Houston. But anyway, the sister sits up there and co-signs the story and says that, yeah, you know, the father was abusing us. And, you know, we would just sit there and, you know, we would eat food and we would leave and go to the nearest fast food restaurant and all of that kind of stuff. So now, you know, she got her mother living with her and all of that kind of stuff. I got to back up off the camera. So now she got her mother living with her and everything. And so, you know, she believes that, you know, since everybody living with her, she can go ahead and abuse everybody. So Beth, you know, gets up in the morning. She cooks all the 
the food for and everything. She just feeding her fat ass, just feeding her fat ass. She said that, you know, every time, you know, she just, all she does is sit and eat all day. And so, you know, Beth is at work, right? The mother's in the house. The mother's in the house. The sister's in the house. And, you know, they make a decision that they're hungry. And so, you know, she was like, well, you know, Beth is not going to come home and, and, and cook. Okay, now mind you, Beth sleeps on a sofa. They, neither one of them got a bed. She sleeps on the, on the chaise lounge and Beth sleeps on the sofa. I am trying to calm down. So Beth is at work. All these grown, capable, fat motherfuckers are sitting there and none of them can't get up and fix no food. So she calls Beth. First of all, she said, well, Beth is not going to want to cook because Beth been working all day. So let me hit Beth up on the phone. She calls Beth and was like, hey, Beth, what are you doing? Beth is like, I'm on my way home from work. She says, well, Beth, can you pick me up something to eat? Beth said, no, I'll fix something when I get there. She said, no, you're not. You're not going to fix anything. I need you to go out and get me something to eat. So Beth was like, all right, then we'll call it in. She says, no, you call it in. So Beth asks, gets up every morning. Makes everybody something to eat. Goes to work. Then has to stop off and pick up food from everybody. And nobody can't do it. Then when Beth hangs up the phone, the mother, who allowed her two daughters to be abused, sits there and tells her, it doesn't make any sense on how Beth treats you. Beth is abusive. Beth, you deserve better than that. Are you crazy? What the hell has happened to Beth? That Beth deserves to be treated like this. By this girl. What happened in Beth's life, bitch? That Beth thinks that she can't do any better than this. Nobody deserves to be treated like that. It made me want to get up and take a pen and pop all of them bitches. How dare you treat somebody like that when you didn't like your daddy? I was so mad. And then she says, Beth says that there's nothing going on in our marriage, that she still loves me like this, but we haven't had sex in three years. You only wash your ass once a month. You only watch your cootie cat once a month. Why would Beth ever want to get the munchies on that? Why would she even try to get something to strap on when you washing your ass once a month. That means that you are only washing your ass 12 times in a year. 12 times in a year. And you think that Beth's supposed to do what now? Who would be attracted? To someone and something like that. Beth is doing this. Because Beth does not feel that she is worth more than this. And how dare the mother tell her that Beth is abusing her. Then the husband comes home. He's sitting, the fiance, the sister fiance. He's sitting his nasty ass there. And you mean to tell me he can't get up? But see, when you when you got that pack mentality and you abusing somebody, then everybody gets on the bandwagon to abuse Beth. Beth comes into the household. Beth has given this girl two steak and cheeses. 
two whole steak and cheeses. She eating so much food. She just ramming this down her throat and eating it. I was sitting up there thinking, how in the fuck is she eating that much food? How do you consume that much food? You got two full sub sandwiches, french fries, look how she had fried rice, shrimp fried rice, general souls, chicken. You could tell they started, stopped at one of them little, you know. And then everybody in the house, Everybody that was sitting there that couldn't get their asses up. When Beth took that food to the kitchen, they was like roaches up on that joint. They all went up in that camp and was eating. You trifling people. How in the world do you treat somebody so poorly? Nothing good is ever going to come out of Gina's life. Because of the way she treats her wife. You can't treat people any kind of way and think that you're going to get a blessing in your life. It don't work like that. Karma doesn't work like that. It, it, it just doesn't work like that. And when you come back. If, if, if anybody believes in reincarnation, when you come back, you're going to be a gnat or a mosquito. Something someone's going to put spray on and swat your ass. So she contacts Dr. Now because she wants to change her life. And she wants to have a wonderful, you know, existence with Beth. She wants to, you know, try to mend her relationship you know, Beth said that, you know, like I said, she doesn't argue with her or anything. She just does what the girl tells her to do because she doesn't want to have arguments in the household. I don't know where Beth's family is. I don't know if Beth has friends. I don't know what Beth has. But my heart completely and totally went out to Beth. Like I was shedding a serious tear for Beth because there is something that is wrong with Beth. As to why Beth feels like she deserves this kind of treatment. So she decides that they're going to get in a truck and they're going to go down to see Dr. Now. Her sister is getting married and she is supposed to be in the wedding. And so they make a decision that, you know, she wants to try to have this surgery before the sister's wedding. So she and, and, and Beth get together and they drive, you know, the 11 days journey, okay, to Dr. Now. This bitch stopped off and, and, and got in the car, okay? She got up that morning to go to Dr. Now and her mother, Kathy, said that she was going to go, but then she changed her mind. And so she was, you know, had an attitude with her mother about her mother not going. And so, you know, she kept bossing Beth around and, and telling Beth, you got this, Beth, Beth, you got that. Beth, hold the door. Beth, do this. Beth, do that. Beth, Beth, Beth. And Beth just going, okay, okay. So she gets her fat ass in the truck and you know automatically you know she's in the back of the truck and as soon as the tires start moving on the truck now all of a sudden she's nauseous and so Beth was like you know eat a snack or something bitch <laughs> eat a snack and you know you'll feel better and sure enough she felt better then she said well can we stop off and get something to eat that's why it's taking you 11 days because you're eating every hour on the hour but Beth stops at the drive-thru and she orders all of this food, the chicken nuggets, the hamburger, french fries. I'm sure she has some other stuff, but you know, we didn't hear all of that get ordered because you know, it is what it is. And so she's sitting in the back of the van and she's eating. They stop off at a hotel and everything. And she can't barely walk into the hotel. She barely could walk to the car. And so, you know, she gets into the car and everything. And, you know, ugh. And so, of course, you know, they, they finally make it to Dr. Um, Nows. Okay, they make it to Texas. 
and they make it just enough time and enough time for her to go to the appointment. So she goes into the appointment with her and Beth and she walks into Dr. Now's um, office. Okay. And she gets up on the scale and she's 606 pounds. 606 pounds. So Dr. Now comes in and being Dr. Now, who he is, Dr. Now was like, you know, what's up? So she like, hey, so he's like, you know, why you here? Well, you know, Dr. Now, I got to change my life. I've got to, you know, I've got to do um, I'm, I'm, I'm something different. So Dr. Now was like, oh, okay, so why are you fat? And so she was like, you know, I, I've just, you know, I haven't been taking care of myself and, 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 you know, but I'm ready to do better doctor now. And, and I know that this is what I need to do because I know my life depends on it. So doctor now was like, all right, bitch. I mean, you know, everybody, been, <laughs> you know, everybody, been, you know, everybody said the same old stuff. Just shut up. You know, basically doctor now didn't even want to hear. He didn't want to hear anything she had to say. He just was like, all right, all right, all right, all right. Well, you know, you drove all the way here. And um, she was like, you know what, I think I want to move here, you know, so I could do the program. Dr. Now was like, what the hell you mean move here? We got to see whether or not you get accepted for the appointment. So I'll tell you what I need you to do. I'm going to give you two months, okay? Take your ass on back to New Jersey, okay? He told her, I ain't, I'm, I'm not bunking with you like that. I don't trust you. It's something about your eyes, okay? It's something about the way you breathe and something about the way you sitting, bitch. I don't trust you. Go on back to New Jersey. Do what you got to do. I'm going to give you a weight loss goal of 50 pounds in two months, okay? You're going to take this and do this 12,000 12, calorie diet, and, and, you know, and then we'll see, you know, how that work out. So she drives back, okay, and she's back at enough time for her sister's, you know, engagement party. So she goes to the sister engagement party. And, you know, she's fat and so she's concerned about whether, you know, what people are going to say about her because, you know, she's embarrassed about her size. Since when? You've been sitting up on that sofa. You weren't embarrassed with that she hanging off the window. That didn't bother your ass. You sat there and was bragging about the fact that you had finally got up to 500 pounds. So now you can, you, 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 you can get disability. Who the hell prays that they get to 500 pounds just to get disability? The mother already sat there at the house and called her lazy. The mother called her lazy, trifling, stinky, nasty, and some more stuff. Okay? That's what the mother did. Mother talked about her like a damn dog. And you gonna sit up there and, got, and, and have a beef with, with Beth? Excuse me, y'all. This is stuck in there. Ooh. Okay. You beefing with Beth? So she gets back. Beth takes her to the to the to the um the the, the 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 bridal shower. I mean the rehearsal dinner. I mean rehearsal thing. And she walks in there. She's already you know embarrassed and everything. And so she sits down on the chair. And she. Wait, wait. Wait a minute, where I'm going? So she gets there, you know, they tell her this is seat. Beth, can you hold the seat? So it's good, you know, she's scared that when she... <laughs> she... <laughs> she's scared that when she sit down on the chit, on the seat, that it's going to flip on her ass like a kickstand on a bicycle, bitch, and she's going to have to go on the floor, okay? So Beth came and held the chair for it and everything, and then she... So the lady comes over, hey, how you doing? How you doing, Gina? She was like, hi. She was like, <coughs> the lady said, you sound like you got a coach. And I got one. I said, she ain't had no coach when she was eating that steak and cheese. Bitch, I got no coat. So, you know, she's, and you know, anxiety is coming. Her cheeks is getting red and everything. And she's like, I'm going to be able to do this. I feel like everybody's looking at me. Oh my God, this is so embarrassing. Oh my God, my anxiety. So, oh my God. Okay. Oh my God. I'm not going to be able to do this. Beth! Beth! So she was like, Beth was like, what? Well, she was like, where's the car? Beth said, bitch, it's outside. 
She was like, I need to go. Beth was like, I ain't taking you home. You sit your fat ass in there, but I'm not taking you home because I can't. I got work to do up in here. Now, her sister has asked her to be the maid of honor in her wedding, okay? The matron of honor. But you spazzing out because you 606 pounds. So, of course, they go, you know, back home and everything. And, you know, the sister is really concerned about whether or not she's going to be in it. So, they go back home and everything. And, of course, Dr. Now has already given her a diet plan and all of that kind of stuff. And, um, and, and so, it's time to cook. So, Beth is like, well, we got lettuce in here. I can make you a salad. We got turkey burgers. We got this. We got that. And so, she was like... I don't want that. I don't feel good. I don't want that. So Beth was like, I mean, you know, it's time for you to be on a diet, Jane. I mean, you know, this is what you need to eat. She was like, I don't want that. I'm sick and I don't feel good. And um, so I need something else to eat. Can you get me something to eat fast food? So Beth was like, no, you need to be on the diet. She was like, but y'all ain't on the diet. Y'all not doing it. But y'all want me to do it. Y'all judging me. You want me to do it. Bitch, ain't you the one that got the appointment with Dr. Now? Aren't you the one who's going to get surgery done? Isn't that your job? So the mother come wobbling her ass out of the... Hold up. that people that is, is just big like that. When they sit down, bitch, it just... <laughs> you know, they always... The, the chair always got to go. So, you know, the mother come down the hall and everything. You know? <laughs> just sit her ass in there. <laughs> hey. Hey. So, the mother was like, yeah, I got bad eating habits. I know I don't eat the right thing, but this is, this is your diet. You need to be doing, wait a minute. You need to be doing this diet. It's time for you to get independent. But I'm saying y'all, y'all, you know, y'all fussing with me. I just don't feel good. And ain't nothing going to help me. But all beef sandwich, special sauce, and the cheese, pickle onions on a sesame seed bun. And they was like, you're not getting it today. The mother was like, it's time for you to be independent. You get to do this for yourself. You got to do this for yourself. Like, we can't do this for you. So she was like, well, Beth, I guess you're going to have to show me how to cook um, turkey burgers. Beth was like, all right, then come on. So they take a weight bench, slide the weight bench in front of the stove so she can go get on and cook. A weight bench. So she gets on the weight bench and she get to flipping it, you know. So now she feeling like, you know, this is abuse. Now they are abusing her and treating her poorly. And that bitch got an attitude. So the day of the sister wedding comes. She got on a big brown dress looking like a piece of shit. You don't know if she's doing planks up against the wall because the chair that she was sitting on got sucked the fuck up. So she's sitting there. The sister, you know, and her husband, you know, they, they doing their vows. The sister married the husband after she only known him for two weeks, damn it. And so, you know, she decides she can't do this anymore. She can't sit in the chair. She huffing. Oh, I can't do this. So, you know, this is the, the wife Buff was like, all right, then come on. Come on, take your fat ass out here. Come on, get your fat ass in the van. But again, I ain't taking you home. I'll go ahead and give you a cell phone. So this trifling bitch sits out in the van and, and, and does the maid of honor toast 
from the van. I'm trying. I'm trying. I am trying. <laughs> Do my best. So now it's her appointment again for Dr. Now. It's been two months. Dr. Now told this bitch, you got to lose 50 pounds before you come. Back. Here she is on two months. I knew when she got out of the van that she hadn't lost the pain. Bitch gets out of there. She walking through Dr. Downs. <laughs> she gets up on the scale because you know Dr. Now make him get up on that bitch backwards. <laughs> <laughs> she gets up on the, on the scale. Numbers get to... <laughs> Ding! This bitch is gaining gain eight pounds. In two months, you went from 606 to 614 pounds. So now you're scared that Dr. Now ain't going to let you in the program. So Dr. Now come in the room. How are everybody doing? Things could be better. He said, you goddamn skippy. He said, what the hell is going on? How in the world you gain eight pounds? She said, well, you know, um, I think that um, I, I had a lot going on. And um, I'm going to try to, you know, move here. And um, I just was cheating a couple of days. <laughs> a couple of days I was cheating. And I just did not, you know, even though you gave me the program and I should have been using the program, Dr. Now, I, I, I fell off. So Dr. Now was like, oh, okay, all right then. And you told me that same BS when you came here the first time. You told me that you was ready for the program. I ain't changed. I mean, do you want to live? She said, yeah, I want to live. He said, then why the fuck can't you stop eating? He said, the problem is, is that you don't want to stop eating. You don't want to change your life. I gave you two months and a 12,000 calorie diet. And Beth, you ain't no damn help. You ain't nothing but her enabling. You sitting your big ass there. You need to be on the program too, basically, Beth. So, you know, when you go to Dr. Now, <laughs> bitch, I'm telling you, if you were enabling, don't go in the room. Let her go. Let them go back in the rooms by themselves. So, Dr. Now was like, I mean, you know, you, 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 you're you bumping your gums. You're talking all that stuff. He said, it ain't what the hell you say. It's what you do. Your fat ass that came up in here and gained eight pounds. So, I'm going to send you back all the way back home to New Jersey, bitch. And when you go back to New Jersey, you know what you're going to have to do? Still lose 50 pounds. So she goes back to New Jersey. She's defeated. And so at this point now, her and Beth have made a decision that they're going to move to Houston. So, of course, you know, she's packing up all of her books. You know, I don't know what she got, but she drives back to, you know, they go back and they stand in Houston and everything. And so, you know, he gave her another couple of months. And, you know, he said, I need you to still lose 50 pounds. So the bitch came back to the day going, um... <laughs> So she came back to Dr. Downs. Okay, it's two months later. Now she still had the same goal of 50 pounds. She gets up on the scale and the bitch was like, oh my God, I lost five pounds. But you're still heavier than you was. So now at this point, I think she's down to now um, six, 613 pounds. Okay, so Dr. Now came in the room and was like, the Cut, what the fuck is going on? <laughs> What's going on? You know, so Dr. Nell coming in, he said, you know, you, you bullshit. You know, you a whole, you, you know, you, you, you playing games up in this. <laughs> I ain't got time. You ain't going to waste my time, damn it, and I ain't going to waste your time. Now, what I really want to do is put your ass off the program. I really don't want to bunk with you no more. But you know, I'm going to give you one more chance. Okay, he was like, "Now what the hell? You tell me now what the hell is the problem?" She was like, "You know, Doctor, now um, I um, I felt like you know I needed to live here." He said, "Well, bitch, you living here now?" And I told your ass not to move because I'm gonna tell you right now, I ain't gonna play with your ass. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna set you up with a psychiatrist, bitch, because you're crazy. 
Now this is your I'm telling you, I'm not gonna keep <laughs> I ain't gonna keep playing with your fat ass. You know what? Well, Doctor Now, um I um I, I really did you know, I don't know what happened. Um I don't know how I'm trying to take care of me. Doctor Now was like, that's some boo. That's the same. You told me. At this point, she's so embarrassed in her eyes and she looking up at the doctor now like this. Like she done basically lost consciousness. <laughs> so Doctor Now sent her to, you know, the little lady, the little psychiatrist lady. And I don't know why he does that. I guess maybe you have to do that. So he sends her to a psychiatrist. She goes to the psychiatrist and basically says that she knows how to push um, Beth's, Beth's, Beth's buttons and Beth knows how to push hers and you know she feels like Beth has an attitude but Beth was like bitch I don't have an attitude I'm tired as hell bitch I go to work I cook for everybody in the house I take care of you your mommy your 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 um sister and your sister's husband I'm doing everything and I'm tired as hell that's what the hell's wrong with me I'm exhausted so you know she was like you know what Beth I want you to have a staycation I want you to go somewhere and do something by yourself. And Beth, what I want you to, I mean, um, Gina, what I want you to do is I want you to have you a day where you ain't got her sitting around your ass like that. So, of course, you know, she decides that, you know, they, they're going to leave. And she said, and buy a bed, bitch, because neither one of them was living in the bed. So they had some guys to come in and deliver a bed and everything. And Beth and Gina got in the bed. The bitches ain't been in the bed in years, okay? You understand what I'm saying? So they get into the into the bed and all of that. And I said, ain't no way in the world I could be sitting, sleeping beside her sleep at me ass, okay? But anyway, so they, you know... That uh, um um Beth goes out and she gets a you know a pedicure I mean a um, massage, and Gina decides that she's going to cook for her. She took a whole pound of meat, threw a whole pound of meat in the pan, and I'm saying this you know this this is not right. So anyway, you know they call itself doing some things because she said that the whole relationship has been built around food. So she said y'all need to go out and y'all need to um 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 do something that is not surrounded around food. So they went and painted one elephant together, okay? So, you know, they did that. So, she got to go back to Dr. Nouns again. So, this time she goes to Dr. Now. And she's lost. Um, was it 23 pounds? So, Dr. Now was like, good. Look at you. You done finally lost some weight. So, you seem like you're getting it. I'm still going to make you lose some more damn weight. Gone home, and I need you to lose 50 pounds. So she goes home, and she decides that she is going to start being independent. Bitch, she goes to a grocery store. Because she said that she needs to go to the grocery store. And she needs to um, shop in the grocery store. Because she's trying to, you know, appreciate Beth's ass. So you know how they got them little buggies at the grocery store, right? The little ones be plugged up in the wall, the little red buggies. And you know, when you like really hurting or you pregnant or something like that, you know, you use the buggy. Because I've used it before when my sciatica, when I tore my sciatica. So she's in the buggy. She gets on the buzzy buggy. I'm plugging from the wall. She's driving on the buggy. She said, oh, this is a little different, you know. So she, you know, going down, you know, the aisle. She said, God damn, all this food up here. <laughs> damn, they look like they invented more food since my ass went to the grocery The last time I went to the grocery store, I got to chill out up in here because, you know, she breaking, you know, all hard and everything. You know, she called herself going to the vegetable. Because, you know, the, the most grocery stores, they got the vegetable out as soon as you come in there. 
So, you know, she's stopping, she pulling, you know, little stuff in there and everything. She said she got to calm down, though. So, you know, she on the buggy and she going past. And she said, yeah, I ain't going to be able to stay in here long because it's too much of a temptation. So, she, you know, she coming around the corner, coming around that mountain when she come. You know what I'm saying? And she looking at all the cereal and bitch to a hoe. <laughs> This bitch takes the cart and runs into an end cap. The whole end cap, all the all the product, just then fell on the fucking floor. She said, oh, Lord, oh, Lord. So, you know, she put the little buggy and reverse. You know, she thinking she getting up out of that joint. You know what I'm saying? Because she think don't nobody see it. Bitch ain't seen your big ass when you came up in it. So she got the cart and reverse and everything. So, you don't know. <laughs> going like this. So you know she bang, 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 bang. she bang up against something else. Oh god, I got to get out of here. Just to get up to the register, the bitch got three things in the car. <laughs> she done told the damn people grocery store, okay, to mess up the church's money, okay? So then she takes her ass into the register. She said, I apologize. She said, she know, she got to get the hell up out of here because this grocery shopping thing is, is, is just too much for her. This bitch that came up in there and told the people place up. Now, I don't know whether or not they hit the production company for all the damages to the good and the products up in there, but I'm telling you right now, her ass had to get up out of there. She said, you know, this give me a more of appreciation for what Beth do for me. Bitch, you know it don't. Don't nothing give you more. So she goes to doctor now, and you know, she still lost a little bit of pounds. I think she lost like... She she started off at 606. She got down to 530 something, I think it was, or 556. And she was supposed to get down to 490 some pounds. But Dr. Nell was like, all right then, bitch, you know, I see you. You're going into, you know, um, um, your weight is coming off. So you seem like you got it and everything. He said, I'm going to go ahead on and schedule you for the surgery. He said, but since you're such a lying ass and you got a whole bunch of tricks and stuff like that up your sleeve, I'm going to give you three months. I'm going to schedule your surgery out for three months and everything. And then after that, if you come back up in here and you've lost more weight, then I will do your surgery for you. Okay, this going to change your life. Since you keep saying that you're going to change your life and all this kind of stuff, Dr. Now was like, let's see what you do. So that big ass goes back and she's living her best life and she's eating her best french fries. Okay, so she comes back. It's the day of the surgery, bitch. She's laying up on the bed and everything. You know what I'm saying? Cheeks all ruby red and everything. She, Because, you know, she got real bad anxiety. Okay, she's a nasty bitch with bad anxiety. Like, how in the hell are you going to be a nasty, a, a, a nasty mofo? But you got anxieties. You both to have panic attacks. But you trifling and nasty and won't wash your ass but twice, 12 times out of a year. So, you know, she's sitting up on the laying on the bed and, you know, Beth is there and everything. And the, um, the IV, the anesthesiologist has left up out of the room and everything. They got her all hot wired and everything because they both to take her ass and then do the surgery on, on, on Gina and everything. So, Dr. Now came in and like, you know, hello. How you doing? She's like, I'm doing, you know, I'm a little nervous. I've never had surgery before. He said, yeah, but you've had a piece of five, bitch. Get the fuck up. Come on, we're going to go ahead on the way your ass because, you know, I'm not playing with you now. I don't know already told you. I ain't bunker with you. So she walks on, you know, down the hallway with Dr. Now and everything. And so, you know, Dr. Now sitting there, get your ass up on this. Let me turn the scale on. Because, you know, he be real nice and everything while they drag. She was dragging the IV pole. He be real sweet and everything. But in the back of his mind, he looking at her neck. You see what I'm saying? He looking at all of that. And he like, and I know that ass ain't lost no weight. So she gets back up on the scale, right? She done gained weight. She done gained the weight back. So Dr. Locke, Dr. 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 She was like, okay, why? He was like, come on, let's go on back to the bed. Let's go on back to the room. So she walks into the room and tells Beth, I gained weight. Beth was like, you gained weight? How? She was like, I don't know. You know, evidently the scale is lying. Bitch. The scale knows you coming when you coming. It already knows what the number's going to be. And bitch, so do you. So she gets, you know, up on the bed and everything. Dr. Nell was like, ma'am. 
Because, you know, he'd be having this little tablet with him, you know. Now, I told you, big ass, the last time. When you said you was focusing on you and you needed to move here. And I told you, big ass, don't move here. And you moved here any damn way. I told you, big ass, that, that if you gained any weight and you hadn't lost any weight, that I wasn't going to fuck with you. <laughs> so, because you gained weight and you're not serious about it, you don't want to do what you want to do, what you need to do. All the previous doctors then told your big ass that they weren't going to fuck with you. But I was like, no, nah, I'm going to go ahead on and give her a task. Now, I gave you more tasks, <clears throat> excuse me, y'all, than I give the average mofo that come up in here. You understand what I'm saying? He said, so I'm going to tell you what I'm going to do. I'm canceling your... <laughs> Don't announce it. I'm canceling your surgery, bitch. You ain't getting no weight loss surgery off of me. He ain't getting no weight loss surgery off of me. Gina was like... He said, I'm going to send out the anesthesiologist, the IV nurse. I'm going to send her in here. And we taking all your sh about your arm. And you don't get the fuck out of here. He said, but you know what? If you lose 75 pounds, then I might think about doing it. But I guarantee it that you and I won't see each other anymore. So sorry not a bitch. Ciao. See you later. Deuces, I'm out. Doctor, now I woke up off that Kimberly camp. That IV nurse came up in there and was like, Give me my butterfly needle. <laughs> Take my chunk arm. And Gina sat there and felt like she was robbed. When Doctor now had given her Damn near a year to get 50 pounds off. A year. But you a victim. Let me give you a status and an update on Gina. Gina appears to have lost some weight. I don't know how she did it, but she has. But not only has she lost weight, she is now suing the network. She is suing the network because she feels like they forced her to eat the food. <laughs> okay, wait a minute. She is suing them because she said that they did not take care of her knowing that she had psychiatric issues. He should have paid for her to see a psychiatrist, which he did. She said that they forced her to eat the food to make it appear that she eats that many calories in a day. Bitch, you're 600 pounds. You are 600 pounds, you've already proven that you eat that much food. She felt like they did not take medical responsibility for her, although she has not taken medical responsibility for herself. She has now shut down, allegedly, all of her social media pages because she feels like she had been, ex, ex, uh, um, whatever you call that word, you doing all of this because you didn't lose the weight. You can't blame the network. If you knew that you could not consume. See, here's the thing, Gina. And this is just from my observation. Beth went out and got you two steak and cheeses. I ordered General Souls. Some combination fried rice, two egg rolls, bitch, fried ribs, a soda, or 12. She got you french fries, 
You sat there and ate that food. And before Beth could lay her head down, you asked Beth for a snack. You opened up a whole entire brand new pack of Oreos. You ripped that open and you had a, 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 a tube of Pringles. And you going to sue the network for what? No network made you consume enough food over your lifetime to become 600 pounds. Like you did that. You can't blame somebody else for your stuff. And that is one of the things that I am, <laughs> Miss Michelle, <laughs> did she say double stuff? The thing about these people on my 600 pound life is that they have endured a lot in their childhood. But they have managed <laughs> bitch. Between looking at this and looking at whores, I'm halfway crazy. These people are very interesting because you see the ones who really want their lives changed and the ones who don't. They are so enabled. They feel like life owes them something. Life owes you nothing, Gina. And I really hope and pray that Beth has rolled out because Beth was being terribly manipulated and used. And you know, they say that most of the time people who deal with abuse end up abusing. And it may not be the same way, but they do. And because her father physically harmed her, she is emotionally harming Beth. We all have had trauma and drama in our lives. Such is life. You're going to have opportunities to be hurt, to have your heart broken, and to feel wrong. But even in that, you have an opportunity to brush it off, heal those wounds the best way you know how, and get up and continue on with your life. You don't have to stay where you've been. And sometimes, yes, you may have the very scars to remind you of where you were, but then you have the grace of God to remind you of where you are now. We got to learn how to be grateful and thankful for everything. Bitch, it ain't easy. It's not easy. I got some, some scars on me that came from when me and my one of my ex-boyfriends was booking and fighting in the house. But those scars have now healed. And I cannot be what those scars are. I can't, I can't stay right there. And you have people who have been through more than what she endured. And they are living their best life. You can't stay stuck and then blame other people for your problems. Gina, good luck to you. Beth, I hope you abide it here. But at the end of the day, all of them that sat in that house and used and abused Beth, karma knows your address. And you don't know when she coming, but bitch, she gonna be right on time. This is Gina's story. What's yours? 
Love you all so much. Thank you all so much for being out here tonight. Thank you to my moderators who always keep the chat nice and um, safe for everybody. Um, tomorrow, I will be coming out and doing a review on one of the cast members of the new 90 Day Fiance before the 90 Days. I have received emails about um, this particular individual and how certain people, fans, are now starting to boycott the show. Um, I was also told that yesterday when they did um, the couch, um, 90 Day Fiance Pillow Talk, that this individual cast members was not even mentioned and pillow talk. So we will be talking about that um, tomorrow. Thank you all so much for being here. Um, and don't forget to like, comment, and share this video. And don't, if you are not a part of Auntie's Advice, why don't you go ahead on and join the family by hitting that subscribe button. Love you all so much, and I will see you all tomorrow night. Bye, y'all.